right, so I guess we're going to do <laughs> this thing. Um, hi, I don't know where to look. I'll just look everywhere. Um, I'm Marisa Aber. I'm the director of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center production of Rent. And with me are three wonderful artists. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves and say what you're doing in this show? Hi, my name is Elton <laughs> Tanega, and I play Roger in Rent. Hi, I'm Micah Mims, and I play Angel. My name is Christian Ray Robinson, and I am playing Mark. Great. And this is Tibbet, and she is playing my lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was nice. That was a very good hey, job hey, at that. Hey. Yeah. So, um, ha have any of you been involved in Rent before? Yes. Yes. You can go first, though. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little <laughs> bit about it, or very little about it. Great. You get to go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I first did Rent my senior year of high school, so it was the high school version, but a lot of the same stuff in the show. The only thing that's really like changed is they put more focus on the drug uh, like aspect of the show. They try to stray away from like the AIDS or like the sexual like queerness of the show, which is a little mm. you know controversial. But um, I think I still got a very large like chunk of who I am from that experience. Um, I played Roger in that production as well. Um, and it was a good send off. I think it is part of the reason I do theater now still because of how like meaningful it was, um, especially at that certain point in my life. Um, and yeah, it was just a really great experience. And I'm glad now to be able to do like that full like adult production of it because it <laughs> one makes me sex. feel like an yeah it makes me <laughs> feel like an adult but i also think it showcases like the other aspects that i think are just as important to the story um and what was missing from like the high school version mm -hmm. um but there are some aspects of it that i did like and are different from this show mm. so yeah um yeah no staff. um i've done the show three times now um <laughs> It's crazy, because when we did our first introduction, I said that it had been 10 years since I had done this last. So to have the opportunity to get, it, get to do it now, as an older adult who has experienced life, it actually puts a different spin on the whole thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the first shows I ever did professionally, and it was a beast. I was really <laughs> young, and um, you know, taking it all in and still trying to find myself as an individual. And I really think that's what this show did for me, like helping me grow more comfortable in my own skin. I actually, the first time I did it, I swang the show. So I got to do all facets. I got to play Angel. I got to be Steve. I got to um, be Seasons of Love. So, and then the next time I did it was actually here in Colorado. It was in Ooh. Fort Collins. It was the regional premiere there. And um, that was very different coming from the tour. <laughs> um, and then this production, the thing I love about you, Reese, is that you love to be so creative with the mapping of the material <clears throat> that we're given. And I experienced that the last time we worked together. And with this production particular, since I have history with like the original foundation of where this came from, it's like looking at your vision of this world, it's so exciting. And it does keep it so fresh for someone who has done it so much and has done it in different facets and stages. This is beautiful and I'm very excited for what we're gonna show the people. Ooh. I have never done Rent before. <laughs> I have never done it. Uh, I have sang it so much in the car. My older brother also does theater, and so like growing up, my older brother, he would take the, the, the part for Roger. Not that he's gonna be here to take the part from you, Elton, ever. <laughs> um, he's working a different show. <laughs> he's, yeah, he, he um, anyways. <clears throat> but uh, no, my, my brother would play Roger, and he would sing it with me in the car, and I would sing Mark. And so it's just always been something that's like very close to my heart. 
art. So I'm just so excited to be able to bring it to the Fine Arts Center and uh, also to be able to play one of my absolute dream roles. It's been a dream role for me since I was a little kid. And I watched the movie, I watched the, um, the production, I watched the random performances on the Rosie O'Donnell show. Like I was <laughs> here for it. Um, so I'm so excited to be able to do it. And it's been such a great group of people to work with as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Christian. Just in case there are people watching this who don't know what Rent is about, shall we tell them what Rent is about? Ooh. What yeah. is Rent about? That's great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the veteran should talk sure. about it. <laughs> um, the show, honestly, is supposed to reflect the time of the AIDS ep epidemic. Um, in the 80s, 90s when you know we weren't sure what this disease was and what was actually happening to people at the time and again i think it's so interesting that we're doing this show right now because of what we just went through with the pandemic because we can all find a relation to this show even if you are not part of this community and you're not even at risk because you feel like you're not part of this community you know i feel like it's still so relevant right now. You never know who you're sitting beside or standing beside who is holding this struggle, this secret. And that's what a lot of these characters are doing in this show until we find them finding comfortability in their chosen families and the people that they love and have around them that support to rely and lean on each other as they go through discovering what this disease is what it does to not just the people who are infected, but the people who love those people and are involved in those people's lives. And the bigger picture is that, you know, it's all supposed to be about support and, and being there for one another and accepting people for who they are, the good and the bad, because <laughs> you see all facets of that in this show. Yeah, I, I I think another thing that I really, really, that resonates with me when I think about what this show is about is it's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about um, the loving dynamics that we find within our friend groups, within our chosen family, mm -hmm. um, with our partners, um, which I think is a, a beautiful thing to see on the stage. Um, and it's also, you know, it's, it's a different version of Lab OM, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a different version of Lab OM. And uh, so, and it's, and it's, it's rocking. It is rocking, and, um, <laughs> and it's just... It's so funny, now that you even bring that up, yeah, it is a different version of Labo. I mean, I think people forget that yeah. because of how raw it is and how gritty it, it is. And Christian, when you say Labo M, Mm -hmm. qualify that for people uh, who may not mm -hmm. be following that thread. Oh, I am not the one to do that. Uh, <laughs> I am not. Uh, so, oh God, it's I wish I had a Puccini's. Yeah, I was like, it's Puccini's La Boheme, yes. which is an old opera. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, a, a aged opera. Um, <laughs> a, uh, that, um, you know, Jonathan Larson. <laughs> Jonathan Larson, when he was writing this, he was just like, well, let me see where I can find these parallels. And he found so many so incredible many. parallels. Yeah. That's, um, what's, that's, that's what's exciting about yeah. it. So, so interesting about this piece, like how he found those parallels in that. It's beautiful. It's really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Speaking of chosen family, since we're all artists in this room and a lot of us became like theater kids because we found our people, mm. how did each of you get into theater and become a theater artist. <laughs> Don't <laughs> laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> Your so faces. So just, just watching you say it, I'm just like, uh-huh. Because she's like, hey! <laughs> okay? Okay, all right. Elton, why don't you hit us first? Go for it. Whoa! Because you're silent. I mean, like, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing, okay. How did I get into theater? Yeah. My, my theater journey. Um, so, I always knew I wanted to be an actor. Um, my mom would say that I like wanted to do it ever since I was like four, um, but that's kind of debatable. I wanted to be a lot of things at four years old. Um, <laughs> but I was always just kind of like the extroverted kid that would talk a little too much. And my family was 
a little poor, and by a little poor, I mean a lot of poor. Um, so I didn't really have the opportunity or the access to like community theater or like mm -hmm. stuff like that. Luckily, my school uh, in Chicago, even though I moved around a lot, most uh, of the ones I attended had like some theater program. So I was always like able to be a part of it in like an after school program or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the first ever like real show that I did though was in high school and it was cabaret. Um, I played Cliff at 13 years old, um, <laughs> which if you're familiar with the show is a little it's, concerning. It's, it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that like kind of locked me into doing theater. I like really fought it for a while too because after high school, I went straight to nursing school, which is like a very Filipino thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, it just felt instinctual. I was like, it's safe, it's whatever. And then, uh, long story short, I got kicked out of college. Um, Rebel. Uh, I know. It's, we'll talk about it another time. <laughs> if there's a part two, we'll the get into takes. that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but I, after that was just kind of like, well, what do I do? And then I just decided to full send it. I told my parents, I was like, I'm gonna try like acting in theater and stuff. And then one thing led to another and it just kind of has just kept going, which is so weird. It's like one thing after another. And there's sometimes when I like have like run away from it, I'm like, theater is just like, it really stresses me out. I love it. It's like a love hate relationship because I want to keep doing it. But anytime there's like, there's a lot of hardships with doing something that is so like, mentally taxing sometimes physically taxing and you really just have to like really love it to like continue doing it um and for me it's just always like for some reason i come back and people have me back and that's just kind of how i think i've kept going it's just like if you love something enough even if it's like hard you still go and you still try you show up and that's yeah. it for me, <laughs> I um, like I was just. Yeah. I wanted to. Uh, I think as a kid, you know, you always dream about being a, like on stage and like you know singing and dancing and doing the lights. And I for sure was that kid, but I grew up very, very, very poor as well, and in an area where there isn't art, like there's not, there's farms and racetrack and like that kind of stuff, but not, not a lot of performance art. Um, I'm from Concord, North Carolina. I usually say Charlotte, but it's like <laughs> the small country, like country town outside of Charlotte. And, you know, I thought growing up, how I was growing up, I didn't want to live like this. I wanted better. So I focused on medicine. And I actually had my CNA by the time I graduated high school. I got a full nursing scholarship to the college I ended up going to, um, which was East Carolina University. And in my program, I got to job shadow some nurses and doctors my very first year in college. And I was telling them, like, you know, I didn't really want to be a nurse. I wanted to be an anesthesiologist. And they were like, oh, well, then with this whole thing, you're gonna be in school until X, Y, Z, you know, you can take prerequisites. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll take the prerequisites and something that's easy. I thought that acting, being an intellectual, <laughs> was gonna be super easy and I was gonna be able to be like, cause you know, where I went to high school, the theater kids were like, Different. <laughs> you can say it. They, they were, were a like lot. the gothic, like oh. all of them were very emo gothic and like, very just where I went feelings. to that's just where I went to school like where I the area I was everyone who gravitated to it was like I love that. that you're qualifying it well I'm sorry <laughs> and um so it wasn't something that I even thought about in my world and sorry and <laughs> and so it was just like okay let's let's do this I sang in church because my family is very heavy in the church I'm a PK kid and um so I was like, let me try it. I remember going in and being super like, oh, I just want to have a high trade again. Medical. Talk to the head of this department, okay? And this is a, a program where people are pre-accepted. I didn't even know that was a thing, you know, where you can audition for college programs in your senior year of high school and get accepted knowing you're gonna like, 
be a part of this exclusive 14, 10, or 12. And I ended up taking someone's spot only because they thought I was gonna fail though. Like it was such a struggle me finding my like journey here to theater <laughs> because I came in the wrong way. And I understand that now that this is literally my entire being. Like I don't know where I would be with, oh, I would get emotional. I love it. Where I would get, where I would be without what I do now. Like I don't know who I would be and I can't imagine that person because like it's opened me up in every facet of my life. And it was a struggle all the way through, but like honestly, I've realized that the things that are struggles and the things that you are afraid of and the things that challenge you literally mold you into the best thing that you can possibly be, even the negatives, because it prepared me all of the negative and all of the like criticism. My skin is like so thick now, like in this professional world, <clears throat> I can like do it all, I can take it all. I'm not scared, like I've, you know, there are a million no's before that one yes. So mm -hmm. it is about the grind and the, the keeping going. And that's because of the passion that you have behind it. And I still, because I didn't start out in theater, don't look at it as fun. Mm. It's a fun job to have, but it's a fun job. And I look at it very like, like those people who are like CEOs of their office or going and, doing X, Y, this is my CEO, my office. And, and I look at it and take it very seriously. And I think those are the people who are successful. The people who look at this as a job and as a, as a, as a real career. And it does take a lot of sacrifice, so much sacrifice. But to each individual, I think it ends up being worth it in the end. Yeah. Does it, Christian? I don't know. Does it? <laughs> does it? Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, my turn. Uh, <clears throat> so, how I got to theater. Um, growing up as a kid, because I grew up here in Colorado Springs, hometown boy. Um, <laughs> uh, growing up here, um, I honestly thought, like, I was going to do sports. Like, I was like, I'm going to do sports. I think I'm going to be a football star, maybe, <laughs> um, or something along those lines. Then I started to realize I'm not good at sports, so I was like, okay, gotta find a plan B. And um, at first, I honestly really, really thought, like, I was like, I'll become a business person. Like, that's, I was like, I like to talk, and I think I'm decently good at, like, talking with people. I don't know, I'm already fumbling over my words, so that may be untrue. <laughs> um, but uh, I also had my two older brothers who I looked up to with all of my heart and all of my soul. And uh, they had, my oldest brother had just like on a whim decided to audition for the school play. I went and saw it and I was just, I just thought he was so cool. I was like, that is so cool. And then my other brother did it and I was like, he is so cool. Wow, they're both so cool. And then when I finally got to high school, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't like doing this football thing anymore. I, I think I'm done with it. And I went and I auditioned for a play, and the first musical I ever did was Pippin, and I hated it. Um, I absolutely hated it. I was like, this is so weird. But at the same time, when I got on that stage, I just felt such a sense of freedom and such a, a great exhilaration that like is just there was just nothing like it for me. There was nothing like it. Um, and so, uh, then I started to just, you know, keep, I just, you know, kept the snowball rolling and I, I kept do doing it. And I did youth rep here at the Fine Arts Center and I did my very first professional contract here at the Fine Arts Center. And uh, ever since then, I was just like, man, I, I didn't realize that this is something that's actually feasible for me to just do as a job. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I went to school for musical theater. So I, I guess I had... I had more of like the stereotypical way of like, you know, I went to college for theater in good old Greeley, Colorado. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Greeley, good old reality. Um, so I'm a bear, once a bear, always a bear. Um, but uh, I went there and it, <laughs> once I was there, I just realized I was like, yeah, this is it for me. This is, there's, no, there's nothing else that I would want to do. And honestly, I got to the point where I was like, I'm not really good at anything else. Um, that's, <laughs> that's a lie. What am I good at? push-ups really well and jump rope. Oh. I've seen it all. <laughs> I didn't know I could get paid in that. I yeah. just put those, that on your extra skills. My extra skills, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, like, I can do push-ups really well. <laughs> and you should see me jump, jump rope. rope. I was like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. um, But yeah, and 
I think it is such an incredible thing, especially coming out of the pandemic, like um, being able to, cause like for all of us as artists, like it was a moment where I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I felt so lost. And so coming out of it and finding it again really just brightens my heart. And so like to anybody who might be watching this who is like, mm, I'm not sure if I wanna do theater, just like know that like you can do it and there are opportunities and you're gonna have to work hard, but it's if it's that thing that like is your heart, I say go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Marisa, yeah. how did you come to your your artistic uh, I'm place? I'm asking the question. Aww. <laughs> Wow. I know, see how that is? Yeah, you lucky. Someone has to do the interview. I mean, I will take over if need nope. be. Nope. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, bringing things back to rent, um, what are, so far, um, what have each of you found as the most challenging aspects of revisiting this show or visiting this show for the first time? Mm. Okay. I, I'll, shall I start to start? start? Okay, I shall, I shall. Um, so one of the most challenging things for me is that, uh, so like I said, I, I grew up just like singing this in the car. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff on a cast album that does not appear that uh, is actually in the show. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of me going like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, I'm supposed to sing here? Oh, okay. Uh, and so like learning a lot of like different rhythms and learning a lot of different music that I had just literally never really heard or sang to before. Um, and so that has been challenging um, just because like, I came in and I'm like, yeah, of course I know all the words to what you own in Seasons of Love. <laughs> um, and then like, then I get to like the first like December 24th, I didn't know these were words, here we go again. <laughs> um, and so that's been very challenging for me to like come in and be like, oh, there's other stuff I need to learn. Um, and then, which, what is it, the most rewarding or the most like the most fun? I didn't ask that yet, but yes, let's oh, do that. I am sorry. <laughs> Just give away Just the secrets. Away. You knew the question? Uh, before? Did this you get is a, a look at these questions on my phone? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're reading them from a phone That's and they're not just coming from your head? Thing. I'm dead. <laughs> my favorite part, <laughs> since we're traversing into another question, uh, <laughs> is uh, just getting to be in the room with everybody because like I am a jokester, I'm a prankster, I love to have fun. Um, and so it's like going in and just, and especially like working with you, Marisa, is like the fact that I can try anything and I don't get, I don't feel, oh, this is gonna make me emotional. Um, and I don't feel like, mm -hmm. like I'm an idiot. Like I can just go out there and I can do whatever I want. And if it doesn't work, you'll tell me it doesn't work, but you'll also celebrate whatever I bring into the room. And it's one of the, one of my favorite things about getting to work with you is that I can just be so vulnerable and I can be my weirdest self and I can try anything I want. Aww. So yeah, I love you. I love you. You yeah. make me so happy. Oh, okay, I'm done. I'm gonna, that, I'm, gonna, my God. I'm gonna piggyback off of that since we're on that subject, <laughs> like I did in the go round. But like, it's uh, my favorite part is being here with everyone. But being back specifically with you as my lead again in creating this vision you are inspiring as a person. And I think so much as actors, we wanna be just seen and heard and feel respected. And like, even though we're, it's your vision, like it's our vision. And I have never felt more comfortable with anyone in my entire career than you to do that with which is why I'm able to be and do what I'm able to do here, specifically here in this space. And anywhere else you go, if I'm there too, because like I said, <laughs> it's you. And that is my favorite part of this. And seeing this come together in a way that I would have never imagined myself. Like I learn, like I grow. And that's something that, as actors, we always need to be doing. The moment we start, we stop learning and growing and challenging ourselves, and you might want to stop. And that energy is just so, oh, God, I crave it. 
So thank you for that. Most challenging would be the choreography a little bit. Just <laughs> in terms of, you know, I'm gonna be blunt. Just in terms of um, molding new movement in the creative process to my body and in ways when, you know, you get those mental blocks as people, as humans, as, as actors, like just in life, it, of not feeling secure in it, but like releasing that, trying to find that release just to give yourself over to it. That'd probably be the most challenging. Um, but again, learning and thriving, so. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I love Take us home, Elton. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll start with the challenge because then the rewarding favorite part just feels like a challenge between the three of us of who can make Risa cry. Because you know I'm a part <laughs> <laughs> of like, I'm also cry. not too, super emotional. I but, know, dry. I know, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was typecast as Roger for a reason. <laughs> um, most challenging. You have to feel the most in the show. Like, you're like I know. one of people wants to feel Literally, the most. That is the challenge. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, there's a lot of challenges that come with this role for me. Vocally, it's very demanding. Um, acting wise, like Roger is such a complicated character. Uh, there's like rehab. He has uh, connections to like suicide. There's the whole AIDS thing. That's, I guess, a part of the story. No spoilers. <laughs> um, and just like his relationship with like friends and like you know. There's a part of like his art that like is gone and not like connecting. And like as artists, we've all either been there or will be there at some point where like it just feels like you're trying so hard to connect with something you felt good at and then it's not there and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like why can't I do this? First fuck uh, I, all of us. I know, I knew oh, it would be me. No. <laughs> um but yeah, that's like I think just the most challenging thing is like I think I'm in touch with my emotions. Thank you, therapy. But it's just like this character, especially, is just like there are emotions that I don't necessarily understand, I think, because of how far into them I like when I think about them, or like if I'm just sitting with like who I think Roger is, how far I go in, I get like lost at times of just like who is he as a person, and then I get mm. sidetracked and I'm like, well, what is the whole premise of this? And so it's like honing it in and really like I want to do justice to what Jonathan Larson had envisioned for this character and I want to make sure that Roger is both relatable and like not just like a douchebag like I think some of my favorite characters like either to watch on film or to see on stage are the people that like it's the villain arc like mm -hmm. if you've ever seen Joaquin Phoenix's Joker mm -hmm. um, oh. like being able to see like from start to finish of like how, how it... you get to a point of like insanity or something like that it's like it's really beautiful in my eyes because you never know the story behind of some some things like that. Mm -hmm. And Roger is kind of like you're picking up like it almost feels like he's in his villain arc, but like he finds his redemption. Mm. Again, spoiler. But I think he like kind of comes to himself and that's a challenge to do that Absolutely. authentically and well. Uh, all while singing. Mm -hmm. um, the most rewarding thing coming to you. And you, and you. Um, it has been that like chosen family aspect of, as somebody that is very like hypercritical of himself, um, it's hard to be vulnerable. And this is my first time working here, and it's like I have very high expectations of myself. But if I'm working somewhere new, I want to like be on top of that. So I'm like, man, I really need to like be on my A game and because of how focused I am sometimes, some of that disconnect with like either the doubts of my voice or the doubts of like if I'm playing the character well enough, like I'm always thinking, but like for some reason when I like look at you guys or I talk to like Micah or I talk to you a lot. Yeah, you do. Um, or if I'm getting direction from you, it like just kind of like pulls me back down and you guys are just like a grounding space for me to be in and I really appreciate that because to do this show requires a lot of vulnerability and you need a safe space to do that and I think that's not to tangent into why people should come to the show but it's like we're putting so much effort into making this like 
show come to life and what people are going to resonate with and see and take away is the authenticity and the genuine care that we have for showing human life and the stories that need to be told because we have a responsibility to tell life and to tell this story and because of all y'all's kind hearts welcoming hearts safe hearts we were able to do that and i think we do it well Yay. What a wonderful Thank way you. to segment yeah. into all of the information for the people <laughs> oh. about the show, which I have to read because you think I would know these things, but I don't. So, we'll um, just work here. Rent previews, May 2nd and 3rd, and we open May 4th. I did know that. Um, and it runs through June. I, June. Sorry, second. Second, thank you. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Tickets are available at fac.coloradocollege.edu or by calling 719-634-5581. Oh, could you say that one more time for the people? I could. Seven one nine. I was just going for the number, but if you want to say the whole no, thing again. I'm just going to do the number. 719-634-5581. No. Mm. Also of note, all Wednesdays in the run, all seats are $25. Oh, that's yeah. a good deal. What? I guess, and also May 3rd, there's an open dress rehearsal. May 5th, there's a backstage tour. And there's May a backstage 12th, tour? I know. <laughs> you better keep the dressing room clean. Yeah, that's, huh. No. We'll talk about that later. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> We're literally like, I'm sitting here like, wait. Well, and this one actually is something you probably want to know. May 12th, there's an Ask the Actor Talk Back. Oh, I love those. Oh. I love that. That's what are, cute. What are they going to ask? Questions? Wow. We're not going to tell you this time. You just <laughs> answer them in any order you want. They're going to ask oh, what's dear. really going on in contact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're going to ask, That's are, those two, gonna wait, ask. <laughs> are those two actors actually dating? Uh, they're going to ask a lot of those. Yes, they will. But questions. we're okay with those because we want you to come. We want yes. And we want you to know. The facts. Yes. I want to know the facts. What's the real story? <laughs> going on? Most of the time, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, I think I think that's it. Uh, um, Tibbet and I appreciate all of the story times. Um, oh, look at her put her little head up. Oh my god! Right? Uh, she did. I don't know. Maybe she's got a career in this whole lap dog thing. I'm oh. sure. Can we incorporate Ooh. her in the show? Angel would have a dog of any of us. I would love Don't that. Don't tell Tibbet, but I've got a cuter one if we want to use her instead. <gasps> Why not both? <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm not. <laughs>